Mrs. Shrike. Good evening, Adam. How are you? Fine. Sit down. Cigarette? Thank you, no. Oh, I forgot. Charlie. Uh, ginger ale, please. On the rocks. Did you ever try Chinzano? It isn't strong, but it's enough to relax you. It's embarrassing. I, <laughs> I think I'm allergic to alcohol. Every so often, I do try to drink, but it makes me sick. As a matter of fact, it always makes me sick. <laughs> I don't know. God must have had a very careless worker on the assembly line when I came through. Perhaps the most careful one. <laughs> Thank you. No job yet? Well, to tell you the truth, I haven't been looking. I figure once I meet your husband, I'll land a job on the Chronicle, and that's what I really want. How many nights have you waited? Not many, actually. Uh, I don't know. I haven't counted. But I know, also, your husband is a very busy man. Well, as I explained, he puts the paper to bed quite late, and sometimes, if he's tired, he goes directly home. I imagine. How's your girl? She's fine, fine, thank you. Just as patient, like me. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Charlie, a double of the usual stomach lining destroyer. Hello, Florence, my love. Bill, this is the young man I told you about. Oh, yes. Adam. How do you do, sir? The name intrigues me. Sit down. Thank you. I'm glad to meet you. A social judgment you may, in the immediate future, reappraise. Sir? How do you know you're glad to meet me? Well, I've, I've been trying to meet you for days. Later on, I may not be glad I met you, but as of this minute, I'm glad to meet you. Lawrence tells me you're a writer. I would like to be. How did you meet Mrs. Shrike? Well, I knew Delahanty's was quite a hangout for newspaper men. And um, the Chronicle being only a few blocks away. I had come before to your office to try and see you, and I couldn't get in, so I decided I was just going to stay right here until I met you. Enterprising. Go on. Well, uh, Mrs. Shrike was here, and uh, I guess she must have decided I looked like a lonely, lost soul. We started to talk, and she was good enough to say that she would introduce me to you. My wife likes lonely young men. Oh, Bill. I think she does. I don't know any of them. Stop You're the first it, one Bill. I've met. Your wife is a charming and lovely lady. She's been very kind. A spirited defense, Adam. Well, you want to write for the Chronicle? Yes, sir. All right. Write me something. I beg your pardon? You want to write? Go ahead. Let's hear you write. Uh, now? Certainly. I may be going tomorrow. Victim of a heart attack, a hemorrhage, careless truck driver, an open manhole. So now's the time. Oh, you're a slow writer. Well, that's not good for newspaper work. Maybe you'd rather be a delivery boy instead of a writer. Maybe. All right. First, a headline. Editor meets new staff member. Subhead. New writer meets test. The story. William Shrike, feature editor of The Chronicle, Last night, met his new staff member in the pungent atmosphere of the local News Hawks pub, Delahanty's. Mr. Shrike was at first sardonic and unimpressed with the personality of his new reporter. In an effort to test his mettle, he even went to the length of insulting his wife. However, the young man Anxious to get his assignment, resisted his impulse to hit Mr. Shrike, and instead sat it out. Mr. Shrike, obviously touched by the young man's ambition and amused at his lack of courage, decided to hire him. 
for the conical staff. Thirty. All right, defender of the faith. On your way. Charlie. Good night, Mrs. Shrike. I'm sorry. I do thank you. Young man, may I instruct you to report to the Chronicle tomorrow morning at 11? I think I have something in mind for a man of your noble nature. Not the rack. Be on time. Good evening. Congratulations. I think he can write. Oh, you do? Well, in that case, you're entitled to a reward. What'll it be? May I have another Chinzano? For value received. Charlie? No, thanks. Come on, get in. It's wonderful. No, dear, uh, I want to talk to you. Adam, you come in or Justin, you go out. Uh, why don't you ask me what's new? What's new? I'm glad you asked me that. Did you get it? Um... You are talking to the newest member of the staff of the Chronicle. Uh, oh, what's the salary? What? What's the sa What do you mean, what's the salary? I bring you important news and you ask me what's the salary. I suppose they'll pay you something. I, I doubt it. Honey. <laughs> I don't know, some guild minimum, I guess. Oh, let's get a Coke. Yes. Apparently, you have three choices, orange, orange, or orange. What do you think they'll have you doing? Well, at first, some dreary kind of work, I suppose. But you learn, and in time, a byline, and then, chance to write what you want to write about. How many ways are there to say I love you? One. You taste good like an orange drink should. Mm -hmm. Enter light of my life. Repository of my golden youth. Stop making fun of me. I'm not making fun of you. I speak truth. Are your delicate ears grown cold to truth? You, my love, I see my youth. And so I cherish you. Want some milk? Milk. With a stomach dissolving in alcohol. How tender of you. Stop talking to me that way. Stop humiliating me. Stop! Why don't you finish it off? In God's name, tell me it's over, but don't do this to me. May I speak? You haven't answered my question. If you can't forgive me, why do we go on, Bill? Why? Because I, too, am a mourner, an incorrigible mourner who sits at the grave. You mourn too, Florence. You are my wife, but also the widow of our early romance. You wear your gay plumage, hoping one day for the resurrection so that you may greet it with the freshness of a bride. And what do you hope for? Peace. 
For just one day when I can forget the picture of a young wife who... That was ten years ago. Ten years. What's a normal sentence for adultery? I was alone. I was drunk. You had betrayed me so many times. Ah, evening the score. It wasn't that. What's that boy's name? Adam? Adam what? I don't know. He told me, but I've forgotten. I've only seen him at Delahan's. I believe you. I believe him, too. He has that fortress-like look of virtue. He wouldn't touch another man's wife. Not yet. Oh, Bill. You're about to tell me that I'm drunk. I was about to tell you for the hundredth time I'm sorry. For the hundredth time I was hoping we could find our way back together. I've had my milk. May I go to bed? You know, your reflexes are constant. Dirty glass must be washed. Young, ambitious man must be helped. your reflexes. Young, ambitious man must be a fraud. Good has to be bad. I know these good men. He's been good because there's been no incentive to be bad. I'm intimate with the type. Good night, Bill. Have I offended you? Dear, sleep dwell upon thy breast, for I shall not. Hi, Gates. Hi. Oh, I hate rainy weather. Well, there you are. I hate them. Just hate them. My wife, this paper, which is run like the Gazette I broke in on 30 years ago. I think I hate you too, Goldsmith. Yeah. Thanks. Shrike is on the way up. And finally, I hate bosses. Not the Chronicle Corporation. They're just a formless gray mass to me. I mean bosses who are real flesh and blood. Honest to Betsy, thoroughgoing swine like our illustrious Mr. William Shrike. That night, huh? Lousy. I went out to catch the college production of Othello, got caught in the rain, got home to find Jenny sound asleep, and I couldn't write a line. Give me a lead. Last night, I saw a production of Shakespeare's Othello at the university. It stunk. Gentlemen, how are you occupying your time? 
We were talking. And what were the subjects in discourse? Nuclear fission? The off-year elections? Modern American literature or your work? Uh, Shakespeare. But uh, what I was going to talk about, and I, I will now, is the Miss Lonely Hearts column. You'd like to do it? I would. It seems to me that such a column could be mature. But you're needed for the movie reviews, the amateur theatricals, the Groundhog Day story, Easter, Christmas, and Thanksgiving feature and interviews. You're invaluable. You're as important to this department as my tonsils, which I lost some 40 years ago. How can you hate a guy like that? What makes a man? Why don't I go in there and tell him he stabbed me in the belly? Why don't I hit him? Why don't I kick him? I don't know, Ned. I stopped being a philosopher long ago. Now I work for a living. Let's go to the Chinese place for lunch. Morning. A lie of your life. It's a fearful morning. Smoke? Thank you, no. Take off your coat. Well, now to business. Many of the readers of this newspaper write to us with no encouragement. Hopeful that among us are seers, prophets, and angels who can answer questions which they sign troubled, worried, anxious, Perplexed, impatient. Oh? So this newspaper, although conservative and shopworn, has given long consideration to the idea of instituting a certain feature column. This column will be called Miss Lonely Hearts. It will run six days a week and will average a thousand words a day. Miss Lonely Hearts. It will solicit such letters and will give advice on all matters except physical illness. Mental disturbances, however, will be its meat. And you are an authority on the subject. Well, uh, no, no, I'm not. I have just said you are. Oh, I have read some of the usual books, like Freud and Meninger, but... Uh... Oh, none of that modern junk me. Use the Psalms, prayers, the entire panoply of organized magic. Am I to be the religious editor? <laughs> You're not hired yet, William Randolph Hearst. What's bothering you? Mr. Shrike, uh, I don't... I don't really think that I'm the man that you want for this job. Adam, I'm not asking you to split the sky with this column. If, as Miss Lonely Hearts, you feel the need to pass a miracle, be casual. Am I fair? Am I unreasonable? Will our heroes spurn this chance to learn the exciting trade of newspaper man? No, I guess he won't. All right, my neophyte. Come on, I will deliver you. Remain seated, gentlemen. We can observe the amenities later on. This is Adam... Uh, Adam what? Adam White. Adam White. These slick writers are the bulwark of my staff. Ned Gates, a playwright of promise, broken promise, and Goldsmith Frank. Mr. White is going to write the Lonely Hearts column. You will use the available desk, and the typewriter will be sent to you. Come on. I'll see you later, fellas. Not fellows, men. These colleagues of yours demand the accolade men. They may not deserve it, but they demand it. <laughs> Here's a darling. I am a girl on the other side of 30. And for 11 years, I've been keeping company with a man who promised to marry me. Hey, this kid was stubborn. So, it seems she got stuck with her trousseau, furniture, and three months' rent on an apartment because this joker ups and runs off to Las Vegas with a waitress from a drive-in. Now she asks, 
What shall I do? I'm single and have no one. What should I say to my friends? That I threw them over? Help me, truly yours, sick of it all. Simple, simple. Tell her to grab the owner of the drive-in. <laughs> this one is signed deeply concerned. That means she is single and four months pregnant. My son has just been elected sergeant in the United States Army. Now he will not take advice from me. He is young and needs a mother's help, even if he is a sergeant. How do I make him listen to me? Sincerely curious. All that little mother's got to do is join the army, be elected a lieutenant? Look, White. I wanted your job. I didn't get it. I'm trying to finish a column. So shut up. I'm sorry. He's a hater like Shrike. Gates, I'm sorry you lost out, but I didn't want this particular job. I would have tried to make the column mature. Tell these people to stop whining. Got to cope with life. What if you can't? Only one answer to a customer. What's in that one? Divorce? Suicide? Deviated septum? She can't see. Like this one. Papa says that maybe it's a punishment for something I did or for one of his sins. I don't remember anything bad I did except once when I broke my mother's mirror. I was seven. Sometimes I feel I should end it all. What can I do? Sincerely yours, so unhappy. And they're all like that. First you laugh at them, and then I can't now. I can't. Isn't there another job in the newspaper? Apparently not. I asked around. No. Do the best you can. Be so good at it that he'll have to give you a better assignment. Look at me. I started as a file clerk, and in two years, I became a secretary. I don't think it's quite the same. I know. But how can you quit before you get started? Don't take those letters so seriously. Dear, if someone is in trouble, how can you not? Anybody who writes his troubles to a newspaper is feeling too sorry for himself. Mm, sure, but they still might be in trouble. Adam, dear. You were a man of honor, so I presume you're not working to impress me. As a matter of fact, that's the one reason I am working. I haven't seen you at have you? I haven't missed you, but my wife has. Usual uh, rubbish from the rabble? Mm-hmm. First week you were here, Miss Lonely Heart, you knocked out a column and two dozen answers a day. The next week, it took a little longer. Now, today, you come in at 10, and at 7, you're still laboring over a measly thousand words. Well, it takes time. Perhaps you're falling in love with your work. Maybe. Beware of this selfishness that we hypocritically call love. Unfortunately, I believe in love. Also kindness? Also. Love and kindness. Man is good. Well, listen, little boy blue. You'd better take a bath and wash off the eau de cologne. It smells. When I was in my teens, I was captain of a football team. Letterman, giant size, salt of the earth. And one day, I broke my ankle. For two weeks, the boys and girls came around to wring my hands and autograph the plaster cast. And then the doctor said, 
You'll never play again. So long, Charlie. Nobody said it, but it was as if they had. So long, Shrike. Go take a dead pill. More of the same. I was editor of a paper when I was 30, and everybody was so pleasant. But when I was ushered out of my job one fine day, along with the autumn harvest, I was surrounded by a whole herd of nothing. There were no warm hands, just the cold finger of indifference. So search on, my friend, through these your mewling and puking years. But you could save a fortune in minutes, hours, and days if you just listen to Father Shrike, the Encyclopedia on Heels. Subtitle, Every Man. Mr. Shrike, I think you're guilty of a sin. Giant size. You're cynical. What kind of a world would it be if everyone were created in your image? Save your slop for the slobs. You want another man for this job? Get him. An ultimatum? <laughs> well, knock it off, Muscles. You've got just one hour till deadline. Turn it down a little, son. <clears throat> I haven't been... Good company for nobody, especially you. Men never know about girls. Well, they do try. But they don't know. A girl starts thinking about boys when she's four, maybe five. Boys don't think about girls so early in life. Oh, they have their frogs, and tree climbing, stone kicking, cowboys and Indians. They do? Mm -hmm. Then when a girl gets to be 13 or 14, Oh, she, she gets the idea they have some sort of interest. Well, they have. Maybe. They're still more interested in baseball and basketball and football and all those other games, except the one you want to play. Then suddenly you're old enough and so are they and they're after you. They're after you? But now you want marriage and they want something else. Then, if you're lucky, you get a proposal. Maybe even a ring. Days go by, and you don't see him. When you do, he tells you uh, you're locked out of part of his world. It's work and worry world. How's the program? Oh, it's keen, real keen. Keen. Dear, I want to know what you're doing and what you're thinking. Is that wrong? No, darling, it's not wrong. Like today, I got a letter from a girl. She's 16. She's never been out with a boy. And probably will never be. She was in a fire and her nose was burned away. She has no nose. It's awful. Adam, darling, you can't involve yourself with the problems of the whole world. You feel you have to help everybody. What do you mean? What kind of crazy world is it where if you try to help somebody, you're an oddball? Is it a sin to feel? Adam. Is do-gooder a dirty name? Why should it be? You have far too many brothers. Adam, I don't want to get you angry. Why are you getting so upset? How much more is there? I don't know. I was asleep. Well, you ought to quit. Paul, the boys have school tomorrow. OK. Please, Adam, don't let yourself get so involved. You're right, you're right, you're right, you're right, you're right. Absolutely right. Well, what can I do? I'll just plain go to Shrike, and I'll ask him for a different job. And if he says no, well, let him fire me. I'll bet there's a million jobs you can do on that newspaper. <laughs> See you tomorrow. 
Yes, sure. Same place. You leaving, Adam? Yes, good night. Good night. So long. Educational TV. Forget. You can do anything. Good evening. Sit down, join us. Hello, Adam. What brings you to this damp sanctuary? Uh, would you rather, would you rather talk tomorrow? Nothing should wait till tomorrow. For by then, our world diplomats may have so carefully managed our affairs, we may all be disappearing in atomic clouds. You don't think that the odds are we'll still be here tomorrow? Hope springs eternal. But the stockpiles grow, and the bombs get bigger. And the trigger fingers get more jumpy. And two billion souls don't know what's going on in the world and couldn't care less. Wouldn't it be possible for a lot of people to put their voices together and let out some kind of roar of protest? Listen, muscles. Vox populi, the voice of the people, is in the main a grunt or a faint moan. Well, uh, public affairs is not the subject of my visit, exactly. Oh, then you're here on uh, serious business. To me, yes. I would like a different job. You have a respectable reason? It's a nightmare. I don't enjoy writing this lonely hearts. Adam, speaking of nightmares, my father was president of the United States, and he always required a clear reason for letting one of his cabinet officers off the hook. That's why I had to remain as secretary of state for over 30 years. A reason, Adam. A reason. My father was chief chief of the Apache Indians. All right. Dreams are the pillars that hold up our lives. Letters that have come to Lonely Hearts have taught me not to laugh at dreams. Not to laugh at the sick who want to be well. Or the single who want to be married. I can't laugh at them. Also, I can't help them. And if I can't help, I'm twisting the arm of all the broken, bewildered, desperate, despairing, sick of it all. I would rather ignore them than lie to them. I would rather be dead than laugh at them. Florence, your tears shake me to the quick. And you, my knight exemplar, are a fraud. You talk of doing good. And at your first chance to ply your trade, you run like a scared surgeon at his first sight of an open abdomen. For a while, you were to me the true heavenly picture of the non-existent good Samaritan. Well, you'll have to continue Samaritanizing or you're out of a job. You're breaking my heart. I'll see you in the morning. That's what he may be doing. Breaking your heart. He's a fake. Scribbling punk trying to play the part of goody two-shoes. 
He'll steal my fillings when I lie dead on the street. Then why keep him? Because I enjoy seeing youth betray their promises. It lights up all the numbers on my pinball machine. Any other questions? No. I'm going home. Florence, before you go, why do wives cheat on their husbands? Purely academic. You want a simple answer. That would please me. They cheat because they're tramps. You've said the magic word. We can go home now. <laughs> oh, excuse me, sir, if you don't mind. Yes, ma'am. Well, I've seen that young man that was with you someplace. Well, no. Well, I... If I may be so bold, could you tell me who he is? He is employed by the Chronicle as the writer of the famous Miss Lonely Hearts column. Lonely Hearts. Do you have a problem? Oh, no. No. That was just a matter of information. Thank you. I am a fountain of information. What do you do? Stop it, Faye. Just say no, what's my line? Sorry, Pat. Excuse me. Good evening. What were you wanting to know for? Why are you always asking strangers questions? People are strangers only till you talk to them. Next time we don't come here. Cost too much. Whatever you say, Pat. Whatever you say, Pat. You drive me crazy, Faye. Just plain nuts. Whatever you say, Pat. We'll make the holiday section a good one. You tell the Chamber of Commerce that we endorse vacations. Yeah. Spearmint or juicy fruit? My questions normally aren't so bland. I know. Neither are my apologies when I make them. When I asked you to come here, I thought I'd be through earlier. I'm busier than I thought I'd be. I'll wait at Delahanty's. I won't be much longer, but I gave the Chamber of Commerce my solemn word. I'll wait. I'll be there. Sealed with a kiss. Edna, tell Adam White I want to see him. Yes, he showed up for work this morning. In case you were wondering. I wasn't. He didn't have a choice. Must you? Must I what? Must you make him stay on Lonely Hearts? Yes. Well. How goes it, et cetera? Et cetera. If I appeared abrupt and rude last night, it's because I was. Please don't be sullen. I respect anger, bitterness. I wasn't. Impatience, even insolence. But sullenness irritates me. I, my mind was on something else. I just finished the letter of resignation. And I tore it up. Well, that pleases me. I'd rather you not resign. Not until I know what makes you tick. I'm not a watch. You're being pragmatic, Adam. Sit down. I'm not talking of the wondrous jungle under the skin of men. The jungle of veins, weed-like entrails, and gray lungs golden intestines and red and yellow organs. No, I'm talking of that bird called the soul, which lives there, and which all men pursue, Catholic, Protestant, Hebrew, Buddhist. That's my question, Adam. Do you have such a bird? And how is its state of health? What, my friend, consumes you? Hunger. I haven't had lunch. Wait, Adam. All these jokers who write columns of advice and aid and comfort. 
The easy answer kids with the baskets of bourgeois, they finally harpoon themselves. They begin to play God. They walk up and down the earth with the Ten Commandments in one hand and lightning and thunder in the other. You're a little on the young side to play the role. Mr. Scheich, what exactly is eating at you? Someday, when I'm in the mood to confide, I'll write a letter to you, signed, perplexed. Then you can tell me. Good try. You can't use your wrist. They've got a sail, flat. If you use your wrist, they won't. Now, keep your eyes on the master. Hey, that's great. Like Cinerama. Nothing to it. All right, now I'll do it. Boys, pick up the cards. Here. I suppose you'll be doing this for the next five hours? Miss Sargent, just because you haven't mastered this unusual feat of prestidigitation is no oh, reason. Unusual feat of prestidigitation. Oh! She's a lousy sport. We have so little time to be together. And here we are on a perfectly good Saturday night. Those crazy brothers of mine and my silly father get you playing games. <laughs> That's a long night, dear. Tomorrow. I kept looking forward to tomorrow, Sunday and all. Now you have to go away. We'll have lots of Sundays together. And I promise you I'll be back for supper. What do you have to do? I'll be away five whole hours. Where are you going? Justy, dear. I don't know. Yes, I, I will tell you I must. See, I have this here blonde stashed away in this here high. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I'm so possessive. I like it. I'm selfish. <laughs> Tell me, why do you love me? I, go, I love... <laughs> I love you because you love me. And because you want me. And because you're warm and soft in all the wrong places. Am I waxing too poetical? Where do you have to go Sunday? Where do I have to go? Well, I promised... I said I would go to my old orphanage. I said I'd go and I must go. Oh, why didn't you tell me? I didn't tell you because... The, this business of being an orphan. That's the silliest thing you've ever said. Adam, darling. I'll be your family. You let me know your every thought. I love you.
right, Pa. Hello, Adam. They checked it. That's something about baseball. You might like it. You still trying to be a writer? You make a dollar at it now and then. Now and then. One of these days, maybe you'll write a book. My Father is a Jailbird by Adam Lasseter. How's that? You feel okay, Pa? All right. You still working in that so-called wood shop? No, they got me in the laundry now. Clean work. You're not exactly a regular letter writer. Well, I've been working a bit, and, uh, well, you know how it is. Uh, I knew I was going to see you, and I don't know, time passes, and... Yeah. Yeah, I understand. I hate writing letters. Nothing to say. After 25 years in the same place, nothing's new. I ain't been sleeping good lately. That dream is starting to come back at me again. Oh? Your mother there in bed. Uh, um, don't, don't, don't go over it again. Oh, it starts the same way. Your mother's in bed. I come through the door, she sees me. The man starts moving out of the bed. And I raise the gun and I start firing. Again and again. The red spots start showing up on him. I keep on firing, I can't stop. And they don't say nothing to me. Nothing. They deserve killing. I knew about it for a couple of months. I hunted him down. When I caught him, I did it and did it good. I was right, wasn't I? Father, uh... You pass judgment on me. You spend a few bucks to ease your conscience, and you come here and pass judgment on me. I don't, I don't, I don't think I passed judgment. You were just a kid. Still full of love and notions about your mother. She was nothing but a lousy tramp. And that's the truth. Is it a funny book? I don't know. Uh, they said it was, they said it was funny. Not your type, I guess. Well, I was told it was funny, anyway. Uh, thanks for the book. Hard candy and the hankies. When are you coming again? Soon. Soon, huh? You mean a couple of months? Well, sooner, probably. Don't strain yourself. Adam. Too skinny. I'm in good shape. I bet you'd like to spit in my eye. You never tell me what you think. You hate me for killing your mother, but you never say it. Uh, I couldn't hate you. Well, so long. Seeing the funny. So long, Pa.
No, I've never seen any production of The Doll's House. Yes, I know the play. What's the argument about? No, Ibsen meant that Nora was a symbol for all womankind, slamming the door on the inhibited path. Okay. <laughs> You're welcome. The guy just won a bet from his wife. He wouldn't tell me what it was. Well, gentlemen. A beehive. Blanche? Where do I finish the game? You can go now. Your checkmate, the next move. Well, one thing you got to say for me, I'm not only a good loser, but a steady one. You know, I've spent the last 15 minutes of my life studying your column. In this harsh and anxious world of the atom bomb, we cannot play the game of glib and cliche answers. Your brother's problem can't be solved by the heart alone. You must look for aid from those who can look into his mind. May I suggest that you consult a reputable psychiatrist? Do you really mean this? Why not? Your readers will dwindle away. You're supposed to be the oracle. I do not grieve over your lost readership, but only over the fact that they might stop reading the Chronicle. Have they dwindled? As yet, we have no performance chart on you, but you've hardly set this city aflame. What would you say is wrong with my answer? Almost everything. This lady who writes of her brother wants to be told she's doing right. Brother is naughty. He should be sent to church. And failing that, off to the pollet side. Why complicate her life? And where does she get $25 an hour for the couch sessions with a hair professor? Clinics wouldn't cost her a cent. The line is a block long. If the line is long enough, there'll be more doctors. Most important, you'll probably find that she hates her brother and wants to get the stupid jerk out of the house. Well, let's see. I could write an advisor to kill us, huh? Good suggestion. But it might affect our circulation. I'm against it for purely commercial reasons. Well, maybe I could uh, figure out a form letter which we could mimeograph and send to all of them. It would serve. Adam, the people who write these letters are fakers, like the rest of the human race. Cast your eye on our own daily bulletin of man's doings. Despair, deceit, duplicity, debasement. Recorded in headlines from Moscow to Minneapolis, from Caracas to California. Let's take a look at the Big Ten. Well, I take it you don't mean the football conference. No. I'm referring to those inviolate Ten Commandments that we're supposed to obey. We would stop trade and commerce if we lived up to the first, eighth, and tenth. No other gods. Don't steal. Don't covet. We would see no buildings housing the aged and criminal if the fifth, sixth, and ninth were followed. That is honor, ma and pa. No killing. No false witness. The quest for the buck, ruble, and frank takes care of number two, the graven image. Who doesn't take the Lord's name in vain? And how many guys play golf or see a ball game on Sunday, thereby wrecking three and four on the hit parade? And that leaves number seven, big seven. And if all the adulterers would fess up, they would cross Lucky Seven off the books forever. People are animals, fakes, frauds. Face it. Fascinating. All right, find out. Call up this one, or this one, or this one. What's that tale of misery? A man, he's hungry, out of work, and sick. Probably some boozer. What else is on the record of grief? Well, the usual. Some lady married to a cripple. She asks for help, like the others. Help for what? I can think of four other vulgar ways of phrasing her need. I bet if you put your mind to it, you could think of about 15 other vulgar ways. Pick any one out of this stack. Meet one of your amateur authors face to face. Or don't you dare.
Hello. Yes, this is Mrs. Doyle. Yes. C certainly. Oh, it's all extremely nice of you to call. Oh, well, uh, I know I asked you to, but I didn't think you would. Yes. That's what I'd appreciate, to talk to you. Oh. Well, no, I couldn't hear because my husband see. Well, no, I wouldn't like to go down to the office. I, I'd be too embarrassed. I thought maybe if, if you had a place and your wife wouldn't have... Oh, I, no, I just thought maybe you might be married. Yes, well... Yes, even just for a few minutes. I, I, I'd appreciate it. The address... Oh, thank you. Thank you, sir. Here, I almost decided not to see you. Really? Well, I mean, it doesn't look right, me being a married woman. I mean, even if I wasn't. Well, I'll tell you what, why don't you sit here and I'll get this chair and I'll sit here and we'll leave the door open. I knew you were a gentleman. I could tell from the way you write and your voice on the phone. I think voices are a true test of character, don't you? Well, I'm, I'm not too sure. I heard a singer on the radio once. Beautiful voice. He wound up in Sing Sing. Naturally, I'm sure there are exceptions. I'll sit here. You're a very decent man to let me tell you my worries. I'm ashamed. Mrs. Doyle, if you, if you would rather not. Oh, no, no, no. I've got to talk to somebody. It's about my husband. I've been married over 11 years. I wouldn't want anybody else to hear. Excuse me, could I close the door? Certainly. It's a nervous habit I have, always thinking people are listening to me. You afraid of something? In a way. My husband is a cripple. He was hurt in the war, he told me, but after we'd been married three years, he said that was a lie, that he fell working in the shipyards. And I said, I didn't mind, because in a way, that was like being in the war, making planes and, and ships. It's, it's helping to win the war. Yes, it is. I love him very much, my pap. After a while, he didn't seem to be able to love me. Gosh, this is hard to tell you about. Yes, yes, I know. Well, he went to the doctor and the doctor says it happens like that sometimes to men after an accident like it happened to my Pat. For seven years, it's been a marriage in name only, as the saying goes. I, I can't leave him. But I'm young. Don't laugh at me, please. Oh, no. 
I'm not laughing at you. I couldn't laugh at you. Seven years I've been good and decent, trying to... trying to handle the cards that was dealt me, as the saying goes. But... sometimes at night, after he goes to sleep, I lay there crying and trying to think of a way out. person I talk to. Sometimes I feel like I want to die. I just want to die. Dawn, Dawn, that's no answer. No, no, I don't, I don't really want to die. I want to live. I'm full of life, but I, I feel like I am dying inside. Please, tell me what to do. I don't know. I don't know. What has happened to you is I realize. Please. Softly, just once. Let me feel your lips. Gentle man. I'll walk the rest of the way. It's just around the corner. All right. When am I going to see you again? want to, don't you? Mrs. Doyle. In, uh, in a couple of days after you thought about it, you called me up. I want to see you very much. Well, uh... <clears throat> well, say something nice to me. Goodbye kiss, maybe? Not a very appreciative fellow. Love him and leave him, is that it? Well, Mrs. Doyle, I, I didn't call you. All right, what did you call me up for? Who are you kidding? Listen, you wanted a sad story, you heard a sad story. You also wanted some action, and so did I. You're right. You're damn right I'm right. Name like that once cost me a door window. Where to? Any place, any place. Some bar someplace. Right. There's a bar around the corner. My missus been in. Not today, she ain't. Hi. Hello. Say, uh, uh, if I'm wrong, aren't you the fellow I saw at Delahanty's? Well, it could be. Yeah. I think you're the one. You're a writer for the Chronicle, no? Yes, I am. Let me buy a fresh one. Joe, doubles. I want you to do me a favor. I can reason to think that my wife wrote a letter to the paper. Whoever writes that column, uh, you know the one I mean, Lonely Hearts? You gotta try and do this for me. But understand one thing. I love my wife. She's strange. When I say she's strange, I don't mean she's crazy or anything like that, but well, we got our problems. I think a man and a woman ought to be able to figure out their own problems without going to outsiders for help. I agree with you. All this is on me because uh, you're doing me a favor. My name's Doyle. Pat Doyle. When a 
man ain't sure of his wife, it eats him up alive. Now I know she was no saint when I married her. I wasn't myself. I was willing to let bygones be bygones, you know? I think she makes up stories about me. I've got to know what she says. That's why I want that letter. Uh, the uh, letter itself is... Have, have, have the two of you ever... We can't even talk. Two people afraid to talk to each other. Afraid of what they're going to say. So we don't talk. We meet someplace and drink. And if we get drunk enough, it's like old times. And we forget how it is now. Mr. Dora, I don't think actually I could be of any help to you. You could go to the guy on the paper who writes the column and ask him to give you the letter. Well, that's... My wife's name is Faye. Faye Doyle. No, no, no. I'll, I'll pay for the drinks. Thanks. Excuse me, has Mr. White come home? Uh, I I'm sorry. Please ask him to call Justy. Justy. Yes. He can whistle up a storm before I'll call him again. He's irresponsible, thoughtless, and mean. Eat like a couple of pigs. We're growing adolescents. You'll both grow up to be full-fledged men who fall in love with girls and never call them and be careless, and they'll grow to hate you. Well, there goes my love life. I'll get that. Justin, you want me to call the hospital? Bob, don't be so morbid. He's too mean to get hurt. I hate him. Darling. Yes, Pa. If you hate him so much, why are you crying? I am not crying. Hey, Justy, get the milk while you're in there, will you? I have a, a double scotch, please. I've been having a scotch. Sorry, we missed your business. Well, you have it from now on. Soda or water? Water. Mr. White, I'm no authority on this subject, but that's no way to handle the spirits. <laughs> well, well, well. What and whom have we here? I wondered where you were. One of our associates has learned he's going to be a father. Spence Khan can stay in the small dinner. You're invited. Great. That's great. What night? My experience in this subject tells me that you're practically stoned. You're a genius. Forgive me. You are cold and sober. You were right. People are fakes and frauds. And you know what? I lead the parade. You made a phone call. I did. Also, I had a visitor. A lady who needed help? So she said. But she didn't. And now your conscience grips you with an iron hand. Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. And that's why I'm drinking. To release the iron grip. The road to hell. One more for the road. Well, first you ought to say hello to the boys. Gates is the future parent. You ought to congratulate him. I know about 
about marriage. I know. Uh, your newfound intelligence is brimming over now. Come on. <laughs> Gentlemen! Oh, your attention! Oh, Our new and brilliant associate, Miss Lonely Heart. <laughs> and what a happy assignment has he been on? <laughs> Adam! Adam is not drunk. He's emancipated. Uh, I, I, I'd like to drink a toast. I'd like to drink a toast to the father. I figured you were one day off schedule, so I wrote you a column for you. It lacks your compassion, Adam. But it'll serve. Anyone can do it. Anyone. You and I can do it. Anyone can do it. That's a fact. I'll prove it. Hey, Jerry. Yeah? I'm a man who's 59, and I suffer from a bad heart. And my wife died last year, and my children are all married. They won't take care of me. They want me to go to an old folks' home. What should I do concerned? Volunteer to serve your country. Be the first man into space. <laughs> all answers must be approved by Miss Lonely Hearts. Hey, Smitty, here's one for you. I'm a girl, and I'm 17 years old, and my father's dead, and my mother and me live with my uncle, and he don't love me like an uncle, if you know what I mean. Should I tell my mother? Of course. Maybe she likes her uncle. <laughs> hey, 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 I don't know. You know, maybe the uncle is rich, and you're breaking up a real love. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up! What's wrong with him? Oh, you, see, you see, Adam doesn't like your answers. Those people don't deserve to be laughed at. Leave their miserable miseries in their letters. Speaking of misery, there was one. Shut up. Listen, Miss Lonely Hearts, this is a free society. So, this joker... Crazy, that silly son of a... What's the matter with Adam? He's drunk. He never drinks. Nevertheless, he's crocked. Where's he going? To try to find forgiveness. What for? Florence, the fortress has crumbled. The walls have been breached. Adultery, violence, and drunkenness have won the day. He'll hurt himself. Nah, nothing ever happens to drunks. Come on, let's have a drink. Sort of a victory celebration? I wonder where our toy gladiator will rest his drunken brow. Say, there's a lady on the phone named Justy Sargent. She's been calling all night for Adam White. She says that you'd know where he is. I didn't want to tell her that he was potted. You give her this message. You tell her Mr. White is not available. He's gone to perdition. Perdition, Nebraska. Johnny, would you tell her that no one knows where he can be reached? Come on, dear. Don't look so sad. Now that he's broken the ice, he might even make a pass at you. Did I wake you? Why did you get in here? Super. I told 
told him I was from the committee. From what committee? He didn't ask. The committee seemed official enough. Careful, it's hot. Thank you. Thank you. Two days and two nights you haven't called. Where have you been? I... I didn't call because... <laughs> because I was ashamed to call you. Because I got drunk. I got stupid drunk. I hit a man. And I wanted to hurt him. And... Not only that... A woman. First night, Tuesday. That's what I thought. And I hated you. I felt numb. I didn't see you. I didn't hear from you. They said at the paper you were sick. And I waited. When I came in, you looked so much like a little boy. I, I felt sorry for you. The numbness began to go. I'm going to cry again. Who is it? Your boss. Come in. A Lonely Hearts contributor? <sighs> Mr. Shrike, this is my friend, Justy Sergeant. I regret the bad guess. I was concerned, so I dropped by. Obviously an inconvenience. I'm, I'm, I'm going. Dear. Dear. What will I see you tonight? Oh, I'm going out tonight. Pa, the boys, and me. Well, tomorrow, maybe. Uh, I hope you feel better, Mr. Shrike. Honey. Not the farm or the South Seas. How about art? Be an artist or a writer. When you're cold, warm yourself before the flaming tints of the masters. Michelangelo, Titian, Raphael. When you're hungry, nourish yourself on spiritual food dished out by Bach, Beethoven, and Brahms. Tell society to keep its call girls and press duct with oranges. You're at home in your garret with hi-fi sound and Shakespeare's plays in one volume. Former boss, I don't want the South Seas, and I don't want the soil, and I don't want art in a garret. Adam, what is it you do want? I never want to hit another man, and I do not want to lose my temper ever again. My gut aches. I don't want to run away to an island or any place else because I know I can never run away from myself. All I want to do is heal the wound that I gave to myself before it festers. 
leaves me alone. I told you I thought I was going to be busy. I would wish to talk with you before I leave. Leave? Where are you going? Could we meet? Well, tomorrow is Saturday. Uh, come for lunch. I would like to talk with you alone. If it's not raining, maybe we could go out to the country. Maybe. I take you home? My uh, father's downstairs. He'll take me. Oh. Oh, you want more tea? No, thank you. Let me, I'll talk to you. No litter bugs us. <laughs> uh, dear, uh, I, want, I want to talk to you. I must talk to you. Knowing the details won't help. Sit down, please. I lied to you, and I want you to know. You lied about the other day? Oh, I've been lying to you for a long time. My real name is not White, it's Lassiter. My mother and father were not killed in a train wreck. My father's alive, in prison. You found my mother in bed with another man, and he killed them both. I was three years old. When I was 15, the head of the orphanage told me what had happened and where my father was. They took me to see him. And that's all of it, except for one more thing. The last time I lied to you was about Sunday. I said I was going to the orphanage. I wasn't. I was going to see my father in prison. But one thing. I never lied to you about how much I love you. I keep, I, I keep wanting to say I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But I don't know if that's too little to say or too much. Please take me home. Yes. Here you are. Quite a catch. A little lower now. OK. Oh, too high. I'm sorry. That was good. Here. Hi, Adam. Hi, Adam. Hi. Come on, let's go in the yard. How are you? Fine, thank you. Oh, thanks for the use of the car. Goodbye, Adam. Goodbye. What's going on, Justine? He's going away, Pa.
Has anybody ever tried to figure out how many tears you cry in a lifetime? Which kind do you mean? Happy or sad ones? Only the sad ones, Pop. Mr. White! Telephone! Thank you. I'll be right there. Oh. Yes, this is Adam White. Well, see, I got your name from somebody on the paper. It would, they wouldn't give me the number. You know how they are. And I wanted to see you again. After all, we're friends now and forever, as the saying goes. And, well, it isn't as if I call up any man, just you. You're young and sweet. And... Please. Please, honey, I want to see you so bad. He don't matter. Listen, don't give me that... How dare you call me up and talk to me like that? Don't you dare say those things! The things he said to me. Shut up. Who was it? What difference does it make? Oh, what? No. Who was it? Pat, you hurt my hands. Pat! Yeah, that better. You have an alley cat around. I gotta know. You're drunk. You're crazy drunk. I'm crazy enough to kill you? Tell me. But Tell I... me! All right. Come on, you hit me again. You hit me once more and I'll run this through you. You're not so tough anymore, huh? What's the matter? You ain't man enough to? You ain't man enough for anything. And you ain't pushing me around. Not ever. Ever again. And if you want to know who it was, I'll tell you. It was that kid on the paper. Yeah, he's young and he's strong and I like him. And what are you going to do about it? You lousy cripple! You lousy cripple! I can't blame him for changing his name. But what's all this about bad blood? I think he feels there's something wrong in him. Because of what his mother did. And his father. That's silly. It's just plain silly. There's no reason at all why a father's sin should be paid for by his son. Adam's always seemed to be a very decent man to me. Justy. What did you finally say to him? Paul. I'm ashamed of what I didn't say. I'm ashamed of what I was thinking. Well, Adam did lie. But if you can't forgive him, how is he ever going to forgive himself? Where did Adam say he was going? Some place. I, I don't know. Pa, I don't know. I only know that wherever he goes, I want to be with him. I'd go running now if it wasn't for you and the boys. Someday the boys and me are going to have to manage. You were meant to be a man's wife. Not a nurse to two kids or a caretaker to your old man. See, there's a separate bank account for you. $3,000. It's a start for you and Adam. If he's your man, you go find him. Excuse me, has Mr. White, Adam White, been here tonight? Well, yeah, he was over there talking to Mrs. Shrike. Excuse me, you're Mrs. Shrike? Yes. 
I'm Justy Sargent, and I... Oh, Adam's told me about you. I'm trying to find Adam. Do you know where he is? He was here looking for my husband. He just left for the office. I'm sure you'll find him there. Thank you, Mrs. Shrek. Justy. I'm glad you're looking for Adam. I hope he'll give me a sec. It'd be awful if he didn't give me a second chance. He will. Some women have to run after their second chance. Others have to sit and wait. Don't wait. Thank you, Mrs. Schroeder. Say goodbye. Goodbye. I like you, Goldsmith. Yeah, I could tell. <laughs> any bills, any doctor bills that you've got to pay, I'd like to pay. Forget it. Well, I wish you the best. Yeah, good luck to you. Huh? So long. Uh, let's hear from you, huh? Yes. Sure. This is really farewell, my friend. Where away, Pilgrim? I, I have no idea. A wiser man? I hope so. So long. Did any of my lessons take root? I do know that I can't stay here. A man of fiber. Forgive me. I'm glad. Adam. Your closing check. I included today. Magnanimous, I thought. Are you going off on this crusade or whatever it is Adam is engaged upon? Whatever it is. I want Miss Lonely Hearts. We're closed for the weekend, my friend. No jokes, mister. You got no gun there. That's a gun, all right. Mr. Doyle. I'm Miss Lonely Hearts. I guess you thought I was pretty funny when we was drinking together. Shooting a man is very much against the law. Shut up. Why did you follow her? I met her because she asked to see me. I asked her to stay. She stayed. I wanted her to stay. What did she tell you about me? Come on, tell me. She told me only what you know. How do you know it was the truth? Only you two would know.
What are you going to do with me? Let you go home. You won't see her anymore. Mr. Shrek, <clears throat> goodbye. To Miss Lonely Heart. Some time ago, I met a young man who was full of bright promise. I waited for the promise to meet up with the facts of life. The meeting took place. My young friend surprised me, however, by bending with the wind rather than breaking. Now he's about to leave. What on the whole has been a pleasant association. Can you suggest any way I can persuade him to stay without tumbling myself? Signed, perplexed. Dear Perplexed, regrettably, I have no suggestion to make. Perhaps your friend has need to test what he has learned in his brief association with you. Perhaps he, too, is sorry to go. Sincerely, his lonely hearts. Hail and farewell. Goodbye, Mr. Shrike. Goodbye. Oh, um, uh, your wife is waiting for you at Delahanty's. <laughs>